This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. They were born in an old badger set in the woods by a hidden creek in South Devon, England. Not a badger, but a duck, one of the country's most striking. Some of its private life is a mystery. The shell duck. They're not rare, but they're also not known that well as we'll see as we try to find out more about the star of our show. They are devoted parents. They feed on tiny creatures in the fertile mud. So often, they're at the mercy of the tides. In effect, their lives are governed by the moon. A worm. To be washed and watched by the mate, understandably a bit muddy at this moment. A few glimpses of the fine bird that will take us right across England via Cornwall, Devon, Somerset, Dorset to Norfolk and back. That journey will reveal some surprising facts. Early spring, the pair survey their territory along the creek. Many people are surprised that she'll lay her eggs, even up to 20 of them, in some kind of hole or burrow in the ground. Most ducks have nests on the ground, well hidden, but they're often raided by predators foxes, rats, or even badgers. Our shell duck's eye view reveals its very mixed lifestyle, often close to man. Whether it's fishermen or competition at nesting time, their lives are very varied. After all, the tide is pretty much always coming in or going out as it does here at Gweek in Cornwall, where shell ducks share the Medi creeks with the well-known seal sanctuary. Time to move on, as spring does, to the neighbouring county of Devon. A favourite place for shell ducks, with its many estuaries, full of muddy food, with the right beak for the job. The neighbour's swans operate similarly, but with a longer neck can reach further, and that extremely versatile little egret, that great coloniser, can spear small fish, or run after them, or shake their elegant feet at them to disturb them. And look out, more disturbance, they're on a road. And an odd one where the tide controls the restaurant, open to any that can use it with the right equipment. With beak and feet, the little egret is a little winner and a mover. They've now spread right across Britain and are often seen with their shelled up neighbours, though not actually competing with them. It's clever stuff.
one from the Avon estuary and its tidal road to Devon's bigger and busier shell duck paradise, the X estuary. There are hungry gulls here, so paradise may not be perfect for these vulnerable ducklings. By May, they are out there, by the pub, learning to be proper shell ducks. This little one could be a bit of a liability. The parents must try to herd the flock. They're easily distracted, the sort of thing predatory gulls are always looking out for. There's nowhere to hide, although perhaps by a boat, but these little scraps of down may be able to survive. The dagger beat of a heron, perhaps. From the time the ducklings leave the old badger set and follow the parents to the water, they had to not only adjust to the tides, but to finding food on soft, slippery mud and especially avoiding danger, and that could come in the form of something bigger, taller, noisier. But here's their trick. Trouble is, they're so light and fluffy and buoyant that they pop up too soon for safety. But the boats mean no harm. Most people love and admire shell ducks. Upending, diving, What can the parents do? Well, put it down to experience. Time at last to relax. What is it? Gulls are always around. All under supervision? Well, there is that one. Surfacing and then coming ashore, but to danger. Gulls are serious opportunists. They have to be to survive in the muddy jungle of the estuary. Guess who? Now don't get left behind when there are gulls around.
Well, did you think it was all over? The answer is, don't mess with the Shellduck family. They've learned a lesson today. Could the parents say, we counted them out? And we counted them back. and the one hasn't changed. Just a few weeks later, and that kind of parent protection has paid off. Ducklings to ducks, kind of teenage wildfowl. In particular, the early down is now being replaced by proper feathers, flight feathers. They are essential equipment and the job of maintaining them is full time. Using a bit of water and that versatile beak. tension in the air. But they can now look after themselves, well almost. The wings are now ready to take them far and wide, across England and beyond. Bridgewater Bay is a very famous molting area for, for the shell duck, um, out in that direction. We get thousands of them out there, so I'm just going to update the sightings map with where they've been seen most recently. Um, they do come into the rest of the reserve on a fairly regular basis, um, but yeah, Bridgewater Bay is the main area for them, so if I put that on the sightings map, um, just to let people know where to go so they can try and see them. In Somerset, the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust have rearranged the geography here for the benefit of nature, a kind of giant gardening process. Flooding is controlled, which helps the farmers, and more good wetlands are a national asset. The more the merrier, they say. And this may be good for shell ducks, which it is, as they are well adapted to water and mud, lots of it. The public are welcome but warned. Out there at low tide is one of the biggest areas of mudflats in the country. The food supply for wetland birds is vast when the tide is out. But when it comes racing in, that larder disappears for some hours. But surprisingly, it's the water of Bridgewater Bay that shell ducks need at this time of year, summer and it's all to do with their vital ingredient, their feathers, because they come here to molt in their thousands. Local expert and shell duck enthusiast, Dick Best. So this is really good. We've been lucky today with the, with the light and with the tide, which has brought uh, so many shell duck up actually onto the beach. And most of the ones we're seeing on the beach are birds that have gone through their molt and are now um, fully flighted. I've, uh, I've just estimated the number of birds that we have in front of us at the moment and by uh, guessing 50 birds and counting in groups of 50 uh, it looks as though there are well over 2,000 birds in front of us. 
we know there are well over 3,000 birds here, so uh, the birds still are way out on the water. Up from the low level view, Dick can get a better angle from a tower height of the panorama, which is very flat, very big, and always changing with the great tides of the Severn estuary. The importance of Bridgewater Bay is that it used to be the only place in the British Isles where shellbuck would come to malt. It seemed that all the other shellduck in Western Europe would actually fly to uh, an area called the Wadden Sea, which is in the angle between uh, Denmark, Germany and Holland. And certainly that was true for most of the British uh, shellduck would fly across the, the North Sea to, to malt there. And it was in the 50s that it was first recognised that Bridgewater Bay was an area uh, for the, the birds to collect. But it remains a mystery as to where these birds have come from. And although small numbers of birds are ringed, there have been no recoveries of uh, birds malting here in Bridgewater Bay. It may be that these are birds that have come from the Welsh coast or the Cornish and Devon coast and also may be likely to be Irish birds, but that remains a mystery yet to be solved. On again eastwards after Cornwall, Devon and now from Somerset to Dorset on the south coast of England. It's autumn here with the gorse in bloom as it often is all the year. Heathland grazed by rough ponies which help manage this rather rare habitat. In fact, as with downland, such places are man-made and man or animal maintained. Once covered in woodland, England is now a somewhat unplanned patchwork of habitats. And as with a garden, people have different views about their favourite combination. Some like raptors, like a kestrel, or even an osprey. Others want more trees, others less. It's a balancing act, and here at Arne in Dorset, the gardeners are trying to do just that. The creeks here have hardly changed in millions of years, though. wetland birds like these avocets and shell ducks have survived too. The shell ducks better than the avocets, though they are increasing. But the best place in Dorset to see both is not far from here. Not a muddy creek, but past some of the most expensive property in the country, sandbanks. And nearby is a castle owned by John Lewis on Brownsea Island, a nature reserve. Avocet country very accessible and very beautiful in a man-made lagoon. From a public hide, you can scrutinize details of the private lives of a great variety of shorebirds. Admire the precision of an avocet sifting tiny creatures from the muddy minestrone. Separating from Pool Harbour itself, this seawall encloses a fertile lagoon and a safe haven from the busy boat traffic, which includes the Brown Sea Island Ferry. Shell ducks are well protected in here, and a visitor can watch in comfort as life goes on at close range. Rather frustratingly, further away is a line of a speciality, spoonbills. Not doing much at the moment, but at least they're on TV. Suddenly there's some action because of a heron. It's 
So it's a day in the life of a shell duck or pair, with two drake teal also dabbling away in the shelter of the reeds. Oh look, that's the Friday car ferry. On time? The spoonbills are less relaxed. Bath time for avocets, which gets the Drake shoveler started. And notice Bill and the shell duck joins in. More washing, preening on the shore amongst the widgeon. Or not. And then back for more. All set, ready for takeoff. Final checks. The bird watchers are leaving too on the ferry from Brownsea Island. Next stop. Super sandbags. Our avocets leave. and our shell duck heading east. From Dorset, as a bird travels, and with its point of view, leaving Poole Harbour, a flight of hundreds of kilometres. Many wetlands have been drained for agriculture, for growing factory forests, or near here, in fact, an English oil drilling site. But where the original salt marsh has been saved, a special ecosystem has survived. Shell dog are a part of that, and in our story about their secrets, we're heading for a great shell duck paradise. In fact, a popular destination for thousands of so-called globe spanners, the mighty wash. The shell duck arrive. From all directions. Amongst all sorts of specialists, like oyster catchers, actually a bit of a misnomer. Less oysters, more worms on the menu. The thing is that mud that looks so much the same can be raided by all kinds of operators who have got the right equipment for the job. Brent geese down here from breeding in the Arctic like seagrass and graze on it. They don't compete with the probing oyster catchers that in turn don't compete with the mud sifting shell duck. At low tide there are literally millions and millions of food items out there, more fertile than anywhere on dry land. An ancient community there for the taking, if you can reach it, and many can, very many. These are shell duck, and those are not. Yes, 
knots of birds which travel from near the North Pole to southern Argentina and back every year, an amazing double migration across the planet. But the supply is being covered up and they show off like this as the tide floods in. That's the build-up. They've used up a lot of energy in that display. So they'll need to get back to the riches of the wash. It's high tide now, but soon the larder will be open again. But then they'll have to return once more to repeat this phenomenon. The tide ebbs, the rush is on, to feed on a refreshed larder of semi-liquid mud. Lovely. Thousands of oyster catchers, godwits and knots leave to feed. Shell ducks also leave in ones and twos and take us back to where our shell duck story started. Right across England, from autumn and winter on the wash. to spring and early summer in the far southwest of England, Cornwall, to the hidden creeks of Greek. Where shell ducks still hide their secrets in the woods below, up the creek. mysterious wreck, a skeleton of a strange unknown past. Difficult for such a white and colourful bird to remain hidden. Maybe easier for the downy ducklings. other life from land to water. A 
and a risky time. But Shell Duck are survivors. And these little winners are heading for a promising future. <laughs>